Imagine a world without electricity. No fans, no air conditioners, no ceiling vents humming in the background. Now imagine it's the middle of summer. The sun is beating down relentlessly, and you're stuck in a small stone room wearing wool. And yet, somehow, you're not sweating. No, this isn't a fantasy. This was reality for people living in the Middle Ages. We tend to assume that medieval life was unbearably hot in the summer, that peasants and nobles alike roasted in their castles and cottages, fanning themselves with old parchment and hoping the breeze might show up. But that's not quite true. What we've forgotten, in our world of switches and settings, is that medieval people were incredibly clever when it came to beating the heat. They didn't have machines to cool the air, so they worked with nature itself. Wind, stone, water, shade, timing. It was all part of an ancient science of staying cool that we've largely abandoned. But here's the good news. These methods still work. So today, we're unlocking the wisdom of the past and revealing how medieval people cooled their homes without electricity and how you can do the same using simple tweaks in your modern space. Let's start where every home begins, the design. Medieval builders may not have had blueprints and special plans, but they absolutely understood airflow, sometimes better than we do now. The first key was orientation. Homes weren't just placed anywhere. They were aligned with the wind. Builders knew which direction the cool summer breezes came from, and they placed windows, doors, and even alleyways to catch those natural gusts. They practiced what we now call cross-ventilation. Openings on opposite walls created a pressure difference. As wind entered one side, it naturally pulled air through to the other, flushing out hot air and drawing in cooler currents. It was like a natural fan system built into the bones of the house. In warmer regions, especially in the Islamic and Mediterranean worlds, they took it a step further with wind towers. These were tall chimneys built into homes that would catch high, fast-moving winds and funnel them down into the living spaces. Think of them as medieval air conditioners. No moving parts, just smart design and gravity. And even the narrow alleys between buildings served a purpose. As wind moved between tight spaces, it sped up, a phenomenon called the Venturi effect, creating cooler zones right where people needed them most. Now here's the kicker. We can still use these tricks today. Crack open windows across your house to mimic cross-ventilation. If you're building or remodeling, position your largest openings toward the prevailing breeze. And consider how furniture placement might be blocking airflow inside. Sometimes comfort isn't about adding gadgets. It's about letting your house breathe the way it was meant to. Let's talk water, the medieval person's secret weapon against heat. To us, a fountain is decorative, maybe a place to toss a coin or snap a picture. But in the medieval world, fountains, shallow pools, and canals weren't just beautiful. They were functional. They actively cooled entire homes and courtyards. In Islamic architecture, especially in Andalusian Spain, central courtyards often featured reflective pools or tiled water channels. These weren't ornamental luxuries. They cooled the air. Here's how. When water evaporates, it draws heat from its surroundings. The more surface area, the more cooling. It's the same reason we sweat. Evaporation equals cooling. Some homes went even further. Wet cloths were hung over windows, and the breeze passing through them would be cooled as it entered. Others kept large clay pots of water near entrances, acting like medieval humidifiers and air chillers in one. And the most elite homes? They used clever plumbing to move cold water from underground aqueducts right into stone basins or channels running along walls. Now think about this for your own space. You don't need an indoor moat. But a small tabletop fountain, a bowl of water near a fan, or even a wet towel in front of a window can recreate that medieval cooling magic in a very modern way. Let's be blunt. The sun is the enemy of comfort in summer. And medieval architects? They declared war. While today we rely on air conditioning to overpower solar heat, medieval builders aimed to block the sun before it even entered the home. Their weapon of choice? Shade. First, they used deep-set windows. Unlike our modern flush glass panels, medieval windows were often set into thick walls. This created natural overhangs that shaded the interior for most of the day. They also used stone arches, overhanging wooden balconies, and heavy shutters. In southern Europe, cloth awnings and vine-covered pergolas shielded courtyards and walkways from direct sunlight. Even narrow streets were part of the design. They created shade canyons that stayed cool all day long. 
And here's the smartest part. They understood timing. Work was done early in the morning or after sunset. Midday, people rested in shaded inner rooms designed for maximum darkness and calm. So what can you do? Add plants to block afternoon sun. Install shades that reflect heat. Move your workspace away from west-facing windows. The medieval solution wasn't about beating the heat. It was about dodging it before it struck. You probably don't think about your floors much when it's hot, but medieval people did. Walk into a medieval church or castle and feel the chill underfoot. That's thermal mass at work. Materials like stone, brick, and tile don't just sit there. They absorb heat slowly, then radiate it back much later. During hot days, they stay wonderfully cool. It's like having a built-in ice pack under your feet. In warmer regions, people slept directly on stone or clay floors or on raised platforms made of cool marble. In other areas, rugs were removed in summer to expose the cold surface beneath. This principle still works. If you've got tile or stone floors, keep them uncovered in summer. And if not, consider laying down ceramic tiles or clay mats in your sunniest rooms. Even a bowl of river rocks cooled in the freezer can help lower the air temperature in small spaces. Now let's talk walls because not all walls are equal. In the medieval era, walls were alive, not in the fantasy sense, but in the way they interacted with the world. Built from stone, clay, lime, and natural wood, these materials had breathability. They absorbed moisture from the air and slowly released it as temperatures changed, regulating indoor climate like a sponge. Unlike today's synthetic, sealed-off materials, lime plaster walls could sweat slightly a passive system that cooled homes naturally. In some regions, walls were built incredibly thick, up to three feet, creating a buffer zone that kept hot air out and cool air trapped inside. Modern takeaway? Look at your walls. Could you use lime-based paint instead of plastic-based ones? Could you insulate with breathable natural materials? And when it comes to outdoor walls, lighter colors reflect heat, just like the whitewashed buildings of medieval Mediterranean towns. Cooling down during the day is one thing, but sleeping in the heat? That's a whole different challenge. In medieval times, people had no fans or air conditioning to lull them into slumber. Instead, they developed an entire nighttime cooling ritual. First, sleep placement. In warmer months, people moved to rooftops, courtyards, or even cellars, depending on the climate. Elevated breezes or underground insulation made all the difference. Beds themselves were strategic, in wealthier homes, canopy beds with open linen drapes allowed warm air to rise and escape, while thin fabrics created a cocoon of cool air around the body. And perhaps the most fascinating trick? Sleeping stones. These were smooth, flat rocks placed near fires during the day, then allowed to cool outdoors. At night, they were brought back inside and tucked under bedding, releasing their cold throughout the night. You can recreate this today with chilled rice bags, linen sheets, or even a DIY clay tile cooled in the freezer. Sleep like a medieval noble, chilled, calm, and sweat-free. When you can't cool the room, you cool the person. Medieval people understood that staying cool started with what you wore and how you lived, and forget the myth that everyone wore heavy wool all year. That's just not true. In summer, linen was king. Lightweight, Breathable and moisture-wicking, it was the medieval version of techwear. Rich or poor, people preferred loose-fitting linen tunics, often layered with just a light wool overshirt if necessary. The fibers allowed air to circulate, and linen stayed cool even when damp with sweat, helping regulate body temperature naturally. And it wasn't just clothing. Textiles in the home mattered too. Thick, heat-holding tapestries were often removed in summer and replaced with lighter drapes. Beds were stripped down, and heavy fur throws were stored until winter. Even going barefoot was common in private homes. Cool stone floors became personal chillers for overheated feet. And feet, as we know, are one of the best places to regulate body heat. Take a page from their book, ditch synthetics, wear natural, breathable fabrics, and swap out winter bedding for light linens or cottons. You don't need to freeze the whole house. Just let your body breathe. Now let's go outside, to where the real cooling magic happened. Medieval courtyards weren't just for aesthetics. They were engineered microclimates, balancing shade, airflow, and moisture in perfect harmony. Picture this, a central open-air garden surrounded by thick stone walls, shade trees casting cool shadows, water trickling through tiled channels, 
plants like vines and herbs releasing gentle fragrances into the air. These courtyards stayed remarkably cool, sometimes 10 to 15 degrees cooler than the surrounding streets. The trick was in balance, blocking sun, inviting wind, and letting nature do the hard work. Today, even a small backyard or balcony can become a medieval oasis. Add climbing vines, place a small water feature, and surround your space with plants that release moisture, like ferns or mint. Shade part of it with fabric, and you've built your own medieval-style air conditioner. No wires required. So, which of these ancient techniques would you try in your own home? The sleeping stones? The wind-channeling windows? Or maybe a backyard courtyard turned medieval retreat? Drop your favorite in the comments below, and if you found even one idea that surprised you, like this video, subscribe to the channel and share this with someone sweating through the summer, because sometimes the coolest tricks are the oldest ones.